Hi guys, welcome back to Empower In. My name is Caroline Porter Thomas. Thank you so much for watching my YouTube channel, Empower In. So we wanted to do a video for you guys um, on the disease process lupus because you guys were requesting it a lot, so we tried to accommodate those. But anyways, nursing in general, nursing education, and also being a nurse, you can become completely overwhelmed with all different types of information. So we try to make the videos easy to understand and also entertaining. We really hope that this video helps you a lot. We had a lot of fun making it for you. Also, stay tuned until the end because we are gonna have a giveaway. We're going to be giving away this Amazon gift card for $25. So find out how you can win at the end. So without any further ado, let's get started and let's go over lupus. Systemic lupus erythromatosus, which you will see abbreviated as SLE and also referred to as lupus, is a chronic multi-system autoimmune disorder of the connective tissue, sometimes referred to as a group of syndromes due to the difference of how it can manifest in patients. Autoimmune disorders occur when the body's natural defense systems against disease start attacking itself. This disorder is difficult to diagnose. The patient can have periods of remissions and flare-ups. Inflammation can be seen in almost every area of the body systems as the body's immune response is lowered. Lupus is known for a butterfly rash on the face. They were first seen in the early 1800s. The discovery of the systemic involvement was first seen in the late 1800s with the joints, lymphatic system, central nervous system, neuromuscular, and circulatory system involvement. In the early 1900s, the butterfly rash was again seen in 20 patients who also had systemic involvement involving the lungs, heart, kidney, and brain, which are now known as the advanced stages of lupus. 18 of those patients died in two years, which led to the start of research into the disorder. Causes. Lupus is multifactorial with no one specific cause. It can be a combination of genetics, enzyme deficiency, hormone deficiency, environmental, chemicals, oral contraceptives, and over 100 linked drugs. It may also be caused or aggravated from environmental effects, such as sunlight, ultraviolet light, infections, the Epstein-Barr virus, HCV, smoking, even from pregnancy. Together, all of these play a role in the development of symptoms. Lupus is not contagious and is not spread from one person to another. Pathophysiology. It is suspected that gene mutations lead to proliferation of autoimmune antibodies, leading to the inflammation and blood vessel abnormalities, eventually causing problems in all systems. The most widely studied and known about is the kidney concerning glomerulonephritis. The gene mutations are still being researched, however, it seems to cause the lymphocyte production to be abnormal, specifically with increased B cells. A B cell is part of the body's main defense system to fight against antigens. However, in patients with lupus, for some reason, there is increased production of abnormal B cells, which, instead of attacking antigens, they start attacking the body which is called autoimmune disorder. Another contributing factor is that in addition to the production of abnormal B cells, there is also low apoptosis of B cells. Apoptosis means a normal process in which a cell dies. With increased production of abnormal B cells and low apoptosis, this causes an increased amount of abnormal B cells. These autoantibodies are found via lab tests called ANADS DNA. A patient may go a long time without knowing they have lupus due to the general symptoms. They may present with general tiredness or aches and pains. Proper diagnosis should be performed by a rheumatologist. Systems that can be affected include the dermatological system or skin causing rashes and lesions, the musculoskeletal system causing pain and inflammation, the pulmonary system causing pleurisy and or pleural effusion, the cardiac system causing myocarditis and or pericarditis, the vascular system causing anemia, leukopenia, thrombocytopenia, and vasculitis, the renal system causing glomerulonephritis, acute kidney injury, and potentially chronic kidney disease, the gastrointestinal system causing abdominal pain, weight loss, anorexia, and nausea, and finally the neurological system causing potential decreased levels of consciousness, seizures, and psychosis. 
When studying, you can use the mnemonic SOAP Brain MD to help you remember the clinical manifestations. They are not in order of importance, but it will help you remember some of the main signs and symptoms of the disease. SOAP Brain MD stands for cirrhosis, oral ulcers, arthritis, photosensitivity, blood disorders, renal involvement, anti-nuclear antibodies, immunologic phenomenon, neurologic disorders, Mailer, which is a butterfly rash, and finally, discord rash. Transmission and risk factors. Transmission. There is a familial component to lupus, which suggests the predisposition, but it is not a communicable disease. The risk factors include being female from puberty to premenopausal age, as the disease favors women nine to one. Lupus is also more common if you are African American, Asian, or Hispanic. Diagnosis. Many tests are done and lupus can mimic many other autoimmune disorders. Some lab tests used by a rheumatologist can include an anti-nuclear antibody testing. This is done first, which is usually high in lupus, but it can also be high in other disorders. Other tests can include erythrocyte sedimentation rate, double-stranded DNA antibody assay, a ENA panel, extractable nuclear antigens, a chest x-ray and joint x-ray and CT scans can also help with diagnosis. Also, biopsies of appropriate organs may be necessary to confirm diagnosis. Treatment and prevention. There is no cure for lupus. The primary treatment is with medications and includes immunosuppressive therapy with medications such as Celsep, Amuran, Azacan, and Benlista, to name a few. Other medication therapies can include corticosteroids, which can include prednisone or solumedrol. These medications can help reduce inflammation. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications, or NSAIDs, can also be used to help with pain and inflammation. Names of these medications can include Advil, Ibuprofen, and Motrin, and Aleve. Also, Plaquenil can be used. This medication is an anti-malarial drug which has helped patients with swelling, pain, and skin problems. Other treatments can include a plasma exchange and stem cell transplantation. Patient education. Patients are told to avoid direct sunlight. It can cause exacerbations in all systems. If they must go in the sun though, instruct them to use at least SPF 30 sunscreen in addition to hat and clothing. Also teach to avoid physical and emotional stress and teach non-pharmacological stress reduction techniques. Also teach to stay active with mild exercise during times when there is no flare-up to maintain joint function and to keep muscle mask. Also teach osteoporosis prevention as well as joint care with proper exercise and possible supplementation with vitamins such as glucosamine. Instruct to eat a diet low in salt and fat and to avoid elevated blood pressure and lipid levels. Overall, encourage eating healthy foods and caution about being around populations that are easily sick. Also teach to avoid infections by washing hands frequently and be vigilant in looking for the early signs and symptoms of infections. Encourage a good support network and also encourage communication with a psychologist or psychiatrist to help cope with the stress as needed. Also instruct your patient to prevent infection by staying up to date with immunizations, including the yearly flu shot and pap smear. Now, let's go over some NCLEX style questions so that you can gain further understanding. Remember, in nursing school, it is important to review as many questions as possible, even if you think you thoroughly understand the content, because the questions are extremely difficult to answer and bring information from all different kinds of sources. So after the video, be sure to look below in the description section because we have a bunch more questions available for you, which hopefully will help you. Question number one. Which of the following are risk factors for lupus? Select all that apply. A, genetics. B, being of European descent. C, having a stepmother with lupus. D, having a brother with lupus. E, being in middle school. Or F, being a male. With NCLEX style questions that are select all that apply, usually two to five choices are correct. So let's take a look at these. Option A, yes, recent studies have shown that genetics play a factor when someone is susceptible to getting lupus. So there is a genetic link. 
Option B, being of European descent, is not a risk factor as lupus is more commonly diagnosed in individuals who are from African, Asian, or Hispanic descent. Option C, so this answer tests if you know whether lupus is communicable or not. We said earlier that lupus is not contagious, so only blood relatives with the disease might put you at higher risk. Option D, brother, is a blood relative, so this indeed is a risk factor. And option E, lupus affects people from the ages after puberty to about 40, so middle school would not be a risk factor. Option F, females, not males, are more susceptible to acquiring lupus, making the final correct answers A and D. Question number two. A nurse is providing care for a patient who has been prescribed Plaquenil by the provider. The nurse knows that the medication is used for what? Select all that apply. A, increasing platelets. B, decreasing inflammation. C, relief of acute pain. D, slowing down joint degeneration. E, appetite stimulant. And F, anemia. Plaquenil is an anti-malarial drug used to slow joint degeneration and reduce inflammation. So now let's go through these answer options one by one. A, increasing platelets. This is not true because actually a side effect of the medication is decreased platelets. Option B, a decrease in inflammation. This is true since Plaquenil can decrease the level of inflammation so it can have a side effect of less pain. Option C, relief of acute pain. Although like in the option above, it can decrease pain by reducing inflammation, However, this will not happen very fast, making this medication not a good choice for acute pain. Option D, slowing joint degeneration. This is one expected effect of the medication, making this option correct. And option E, an appetite stimulant. Plequinil does not stimulate the appetite. Marinol is one medication that does. And finally, option F, anemia. This is not true because as an adverse effect, Plequinil can cause anemia making the correct answer options B and D. And finally, question number three. As the nurse assesses a client with lupus, she expects to see which of the following findings. A, fever, nausea, and vomiting. B, fever, anorexia, and facial rash. C, low blood pressure, facial rash, and oral ulcers. Or D, high blood pressure, nausea, and polycythemia. This question is a bit confusing because some of the signs and symptoms are found in all of the answer options. However, it is asking you to find the most right answer, which contains all correct signs and symptoms, which is only found in option B, because fever, anorexia, and facial rash are all seen in clients with lupus. Clients with lupus can also have oral ulcers and high blood pressure. However, the other choices do not fit the profile of the client with lupus making the final answer B. All right guys, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did like the video, please do me a favor and give the video a thumbs up. And also, if you would like to see other videos like this, please also give it a thumbs up as well. To enter the giveaway, all you have to do is post a comment and also subscribe to the channel. Be sure you subscribe to the channel. You can do that by clicking right here. And also, you can post a comment about whatever you want. But if you want, you can post a video request. You can also post your favorite quote, which I can use in my next upcoming motivational video, potentially. And you can also just say hi. So either way, I just love to hear from you guys and I cannot wait to do that. So anyways, I can't wait to see you guys in my next video. I love you so much. Bye.